This is Overtime with Chris Dewar, only on KHQA. Well, this is Saturday, September 24th, and you have entered overtime. And like the little elves that would build shoes for the cobbler when he slept, the KHQA sports team has been busy on your behalf, cobbling together highlights from every corner of the tri-states today and much beyond. On tap, we've got plenty of local softball and soccer from the high school docket, plus a reunion of sorts of some of the area's very best high school football players over the last few years, as Monmouth and Illinois College waged a war today in Jacksonville. Plus, we'll check in with Western Illinois, Culver, Truman State, and many more. But we start today in Iowa City with just another fantastic day at the office for the Gate City's finest football export. Our Joe Morano was in the house at Kinnick Stadium today and would watch James Vandenberg work his magic. His team already up 14 to three at this point when Vandenberg gives the ball to Marcus Coker and he's gonna run it in for the score to extend that margin out to 21-3 at the, the Iowa Hawkeyes behest right there and at the expense of Louisiana Monroe. Later Vandenberg to the air, this time to Marvin McNutt who had himself another fine day today with a big first down pickup. And then it is Martin Manley who goes into the red zone off the beautiful strike from Mr. Vandenberg right there, picking up big yardage, big chunks of yardage, which would set up a touchdown scoring strike on the day here from Mr. James Vandenberg up top to, to Marvin McNutt for 17 yards. And that, my friends, extends the Hawkeyes margin out to 28 to three at the half. Second half, more from the ground game for the Hawkeyes. And again, it's Marcus Coker breaking the run right here, breaking three different tackles along the way, keeping that Hawkeye offense a moving at that point. That would set up a little play action passing fun right here from James Vandenberg hooking up with Keenan Davis actually straight drop back and here is Keenan Davis wide open for the score beautiful pass from Vandenberg beautiful catch from uh, Mr. Davis backing out of the end zone for the 23 yard strike there the Iowa defense good all day long it's Micah Hyde right here with the takedown all about James Vandenberg and the Hawkeyes today as they win yet again. Final count in this one was 45 to 17. Vandenberg with 270 passing today, three touchdowns as he continues to cruise and build wonderful rapport with those wide receivers. You know, we took a step forward, and uh, I think we came out and uh, just competed, and we knew it was going to be a hard, uh, hard game. We knew they were going to come out because we both have a, we both had a, uh, have a bye week next week, and we knew that, that was going to be a hard game the whole, the whole game. And uh, I think we just came out and just. Uh, worked hard and competed. I know what those guys are capable of and they played up to expectations again today and we got great protection from the O-line um, all day and that makes mine and the receivers jobs a lot easier. Um, it's definitely huge. Um, as you can see, uh, you know, at, with the running game and passing game flowing, it's pretty hard to stop us. We're glad to get out of here three and one and get this bye week and I think everybody's looking forward to that schedule but uh, we'll do some reflecting this week and get some guys legs back um, but I think we're all looking forward to a tough Big Ten schedule. Just, he, like I say every week this guy's a leader and he comes out and competes gives his heart out he's the first person to tell you to stay after practice let's, let's get some timing right this guy he's, he's just a uh, really good leader and he, he, um, he throws the thing. So. And much more from our favorite homegrown Hawkeye coming up a little later this week. How about the Illini trying to move to 4-0 for the first time in 60 years? Was a struggle today against Western Michigan, but a great pass right here from Nate Shieldhouse to Evan Wilson. Puts the Illini up at that point, 7-0. How about some defense, this time courtesy of Terry Hawthorne, who comes up with a beautiful pick right there, helping to stymie the attack for Western Michigan. However, back to the air goes Alex Carter. This one to uh, Shaib Ravenel for a 35-yard uh, touchdown strike which actually puts Western Michigan up at this point 13 to 10. The Illini fighting their way back in this ball game. Beautiful, beautiful option pitch right there from Shieldhouse over to Donovan Young, the freshman who scores from 14 yards out, makes it 17 to 13. The Illini defense would make that stand up on the day as they end up getting the victory today due to the Illini. Final count in this one was 23 to 20. Again, first 4-0 start since 1950. That's pretty impressive indeed. On the scoreboard today, Western Illinois, our highlights never came down from uh, our friends up in Cedar Rapids, so we can just tell you, and maybe that's a godsend, by the way, the uh, Leathernecks played today. They lose to number two, UNI, by the final count at the Unidone of 38 to 10. Your one bright spot today for the Leathernecks, Terry and Crump with 131 receiving yards. But it is a struggle for the Leathernecks right now, and it's not going to get any easier with Southern Illinois visiting next week. Right now, Western Illinois 1-3 and three on the season. The news no better for Culver Stockton as Culver Stockton gets beaten badly by Central Methodist. One local highlight today for Central Methodist, though, former Clark County star Brian Plenge with a 47-yard pick six interception in the fourth quarter as his team rolls past the Wildcats 42-5 is your final there. 
No good news for Truman State either as they get housed today by Central Missouri State 54 to 30, though in a losing, clause, losing cause, the Lehigh transfer, J.B. Clark at quarterback with 304 yards passing today for Truman State. Well, thanks to an impressive 3-0 start, engineered no less with a true freshman under center, Illinois College Football certainly entered this week, week four, with the look of a legitimate Midwest Conference contender. So what better litmus test than the reigning league champions and their all-world YouTube star quarterback, Alex Tanney, who according to our radio report this week had as many as six NFL scouts watching him work in practice. He is impressive. More on him in just a second. The story early on, though, Illinois College's hot start playing to a packed house today at England Stadium. First Monmouth possession, it would be fueled by the Scots ground game. And this guy, Trey Yoakum, out of Bushnell Prairie City Avon, big eight-yard pickup on third and long, moves the ball into the red zone. And then, since he did the heavy lifting, it's Yoakum again. We'll let him finish. Yoakum, if you got him, you knew that was coming. 81 yards on the day for Trey on 15 carries and that touchdown. Promising start to the next drive for IC as the freshman Michael Bates hooks up with Cecil Brimage, who takes this past 31 yards, but an interception by Brown County's Jacob Wilson slows that roll and then it's Alex Tanny to work. He is good. This pass right here to Austin Peterson. Look at how big this kid is. 6'5 and then this is just absolutely pretty. Rolling out a 60 yard bomb strike right here to Spencer Brown makes it 13 to nothing before you could blink and yes Alex Tanny is very much for real. Michael Bates though trying to get his team back rolling in this one. Some nice passing from the lefty. The freshman Couple of first down pickups, big ones here. This one to Brock Thompson would set up an eight yard touchdown run by Matt Williamson, which would cut Monmouth's lead at that point to 13 to seven. Tanny wastes no time answering the back right here. Straight up the middle to Michael Davis, 10 yard touchdown strike makes it 20 to seven. Bates would come back right in this game as well, however, for Illinois College, hooking up with Colin Dooling, best catch of the day by anyone, going over the shoulder, pretty stuff from Dooling at that point. That would set up an apparent strike for a touchdown. Monmouth's defense comes up big. Great stop there by Eric Weber. This would be even better by the Monmouth defense. At the one-yard line, Bates trying to sneak one in. The ball bounces around three times, ends up in the hands of the big linebacker, Adam Hoist and he's going to take the ball and rumble 101 yards. Going to need oxygen afterwards because he's a big fella, likes his carbs, no less gets in for the score at that point, makes it 26 to seven. I see though, driving back, making some things happen at the other end. Michael Lafferty though, the Illini West product, former KHQA player of the year on the coverage right here to stop a touchdown attempt, number 15 on your screen. Nice to see Lafferty back and healthy. And, and this time it's Michael Bates though, going in for the score, cutting the lead at halftime to 26 14 in favor of the Monmouth fighting Scott. Second half now, more of Alex Tanny right into your living room, right into your pupils actually. He throws that ball on a laser strike right here to Austin Peterson, extends the lead at that point out to 33 to 14. Nick Law with a two point conversion. We only show you this because his lead back, the former Illini West star, Stefan Flynn, who led the way. There's Stefan right there, big number 34. Nice block to set that up. How about some more local flavor in this one? Jacob Wilson. If we had a fraternity of pain shirt to give to college guys, Jacob Wilson would get it for this one. The Brown County star, nice, nice hit right there. Playing as a true freshman, all about Monmouth today as they roll in the second half. Beat Illinois College and hand the Blue Boys their first loss of the season. 55 to 14 was your final. And when we come back, the softball stretch drive heats up as Palmyra and Centralia wage the first of two Diamond Wars this week. Plus one of the area's last remaining high school unbeatens is perfect no more. We'll tell you who coming up next. Good first block.
the long way too. I went up through Kirksville. Welcome back to Overtime, everybody. This is Moment of Truth Week in the Clarence Cannon Conference for softball. As league co-favorites at this point, Palmyra and Centralia get together not once but twice. Thursday's meeting at Flower City Park determines the league champion, but thanks to the Centralia tournament today, we also got the added bonus of a dress rehearsal, although a little gamesmanship from the Panthers of Centralia as they would throw their number three pitcher today. Palmyra feasted in the first inning. Katie Serban with a runner aboard doubles off the fence. And that, my friends, would set up your pitcher and your cleanup hitter, Kendra Hens, going right back up the middle. Two runs to score there. Palmyra staked to the early 2 to nothing lead. Ms. Hens, she likes to pitch in a position of power, and she would do exactly that for most of the rest of this game. Coming up and starting off against a really potent Centralia lineup, she starts the day off with a strikeout, setting the tone for what would be a very good day for her. The uh, offense behind her, very strong all day long. How about uh, Miss Kelsey Martin right here? Starting things off with a swinging bunt of sorts that's going to end up being the equivalent of a triple thanks to some throwing errors by Centralia. That would set up your hero of the day, Lex Van Nostrand, who had two home runs in a game earlier in the day. She also had this RBI rip and another home run in this game. She hit like a bazillion D home run today. I didn't get any of them, unfortunately. But we can tell you that Palmyra wins this game over Centralia. 10 to 5 is your final in the dress rehearsal for the big one on Thursday. Although I think it will be much more entertaining. Centralia's got a heck of a young pitcher, and that should be an awful lot of fun. Throws the rise ball, throws a lot of off-speed stuff. So that should be a wonderful game. We'll have those highlights for you coming up Thursday night. Meanwhile, Palmyra took care of business, as I mentioned. Lots of home runs today to get into the championship game as they beat up on Macon 18-3. Van Ostrand with two of those home runs. I think Katie Serban had another one of those home runs. Big day for the Palmyra offense. Meanwhile, I mentioned that one of our area undefeateds was finally beaten today. That would be the Knox County Lady Eagles, who lost in the semifinals of the Schuyler County Tournament to Scotland County, 4-3. to three. Bethany Rader, we talked about her hitting. She pitched very well today as well, going with the complete game victory over her arch rivals. Remember, Knox County had beaten Scotland County already twice this season, so this is a nice vengeance win for Scotland County. More on them in a second. First of all, though, Knox County goes into the uh, third place game and beats up on La Plata 12-4. Devin Goodhouse, she's mighty, mighty. Uh, she ends up with a pair of home runs today and four ribbies in that victory for the Lady Eagles. Now on to Scotland County playing in the championship game in Lancaster against the host team, Schuyler County. Early on, Schuyler County taking advantage. This is Amber Van Landingham skirting one out to center field to bring home Chloe Robinson and tie the game at that point at one apiece. Megan Creek, though, would get out of the jam for the Tigers. Nice strikeout for her. How about some offense from the Tigers trying to rally back in this game? Bethany Rader grounds into the uh, fielder's choice. Miss Creek moves to third, and Elizabeth Duzon scores for Scotland County at that point. Then it's Miss Creek crossing home, coming up right here on a wild pitch. Tell you what, Scotland County being resourceful and advantageous at that point, taking advantage of what they were given. More here by the outstanding catcher, Lauren Smith, who hits this one into right field, brings home two more. But for all of that offensive barrage, Scotland County could never quite get on top of Schuyler County today. Schuyler County playing well on the home digs today. They end up winning this game as Van Landingham with a nice showing today. How about some Jacqueline Bushnell right here? The double to left field scores another run. And then it would be uh, Whitney McElhaney coming up with a big RBI knock right here. Schuyler County wins the championship of their own tournament by the final count of 8-5 to five today. It was kind of a paltry schedule on the high school docket for a Saturday. Good news, though, for the Hannibal Pirates as they go down to the loaded Troy tournament playing a couple of teams that they may see in the postseason. Fort Zumwalt West falls to them in the semifinals as Gabby Wiley had a huge day with 37 total kills in the tournament. Hannibal gets out of pool play undefeated to get to the semifinals. Championship game, though, did not go Hannibal's way. We talked about rivals. Rockbridge expected to be one of the obstacles for Hannibal this season. Uh, Taylor Bennett with a big day, but Rockbridge wins in two over Hannibal. But nice showing for the Lady Pirates as they finish second in a loaded Troy tournament today. Also, the Holy Trinity volleyball team cleans house in Burlington today, beating the number five team in Class 2 in three games. Big, big win for Melissa Friesmeyer and company as they win in three games over upper-level competition. That's very nifty as well. Quincy I tennis team looks good today, going on the road to Belleville and winning a pair, 4-1 to one over Belleville West, and then sweeping past Ultoff today. So nice wins for Mike Terry's crew. And in golf today, good showing as we get close to regionals, believe it or not. I believe regionals next week. Quincy High School finishes second to a very good Galesburg team. Zach Burry was your medalist on the day. 
Quincy High between Zach Burry, Colby Rodemick, and uh, Zach Smith, who finished ninth on the day. Three top ten finishes, so nifty showing for the Blue Devils at the Galesburg Invitational. How about some soccer? It was Alumni Day at Quincy High School, taking on Alleman, and the alumni were treated to a scoring fest in this one. 38 seconds in, Dalton Stark with a throw in, and if you seek then you shall find the net in this case. Alan Seek with a beautiful header right there to make it 1-0 that quickly. We're not done. Dalton Stark scoring his first goal of the season. Great defender getting a chance to maybe show off a little bit. Nice uh, right foot right there to pound that home. More Alan Seek. This guy just nifty. Look at this move. Right through the wickets on the defender and right to the back of the goal. Makes it 3 to nothing at that point. And from that point on in the first half, all of this, mind you, in the first uh, 25 minutes of this game, Dylan Hosher is about to take over the show. Doing some things right here. Hosher right there, pounding home back-to-back -back goals. We're going to show you this one in slow motion because the move was so darn pretty. Actually, we're going to show you this one in slow motion because the move is so darn pretty. I repeat myself, but it's, oh, look at that. Just great stuff right there. Pounding one home and going upper 75, if you will, in this one. Look at the move by Dylan. This is probably sensational seven worthy as he pounds this home for the goal at that point. And Quincy High gets a 12-0 win today over Alleman to even their conference record to one and one after the rare loss earlier uh, last week. Meanwhile, one other soccer score to pass along, Quincy Notre Dame takes out Jacksonville today. Jacksonville came into the day 10 and one. The Crimson's really good in Steve West last year, but late goals by Darnell and Allen power the Raiders to a win over at Boots Bush. Two to one was your final there. Also, Taylor Reese with a pair of assists in that game as well. And when we come back, we'll parse the rest of the college docket and there's still a pulse, Cardinal fans, thanks to your new best friends, the Chicago Cubs. <coughs> Sure enough, Knox County's bus. On the college scoreboard today, a couple of wins for local programs powered by local products. Queens University improves to three, or picks up, I should say, its third conference win, which is more than it had last year, thanks to Brittany Houghton, the Quincy High product, with 10 kills today. It's Quincy High, or Quincy University, I should say, goes on the road and beats Rockhurst three games to nil. And Illinois College, thanks to the outstanding hitting of Payson product, Elise Speckhart beats Beloit today three games to one. Miss Speckhart with 10 kills on the day. 